Okay, in section 5.2, we're going to talk about the trigonometric functions. Uh, before we do that, though, it's crucial that you're able to locate these points on the unit circle, so make sure you understand 5.1 really well. You may want to go back and watch that video again for 5.1. But if you understand that, this isn't very hard at all. We Remember how we de de define the point on the unit circle. We always start at 1, 0. And then think of t as a real number. If t is a positive real number, we move counterclockwise, and this point where we end up, we're calling it p of xy. If t is clockwise, we move in the positive direction, and the point would be p of xy also. Anyway, uh, so we, we do, if, you, if you move a, a positive distance t along the unit circle, the, the x-coordinate will be defined to be the cosine of t, and the y-coordinate will be defined to be the sine of t. The tangent is the ratio of y over x. And focus on those three trig functions, because the other three are just the reciprocals of those, see? The reciprocal of cosine t is the secant of t, which would be 1 over x. The uh, reciprocal of the sine of t is the cosecant of t, which is 1 over y. And the reciprocal of tangent t is the cotangent t, which is x over y. Now there's an issue here with the domain of these trig functions. We're going to address that in the next video, okay? What I want to talk about, though, is how do you keep it straight? How, how do you keep it straight so you don't get these mixed up? Well, first of all, you should remember that the, the cotangent and tangent are reciprocals. But when it comes to cosine, the reciprocal is secant. And, and what I'm going to keep it straight is since cosine starts with a C, the reciprocal starts with an S. That's just a nice way to, to remember it. And since sine starts with an S, the reciprocal starts with a C. So if that helps, great. Anyway, let's, let's use the definition to compute some uh, specific trig functions in the first quadrant, okay? My advice here is do not memorize this chart, but rather use, learn the, the, these, these um, special points, right? And be able to, to uh, convert those points to different qu quadrants like we did in the last video. Okay, anyway, t is 0. You're sitting here. You haven't gone anywhere. The real number is 0. The, the x-coordinate is 1, the y-coordinate is 0, so cosine 0 equals 1, sine 0 equals 0. Tangent would have to be y over x, which is the sine over cosine, which is 0. Secant is 1 over cosine, which is 1. These other two don't exist because the cosecant would be 1 over 0, which doesn't exist, undefined, and cotangent is 1 over 0, which is also undefined. Let's do a couple more, and then I'll ask you to finish this table, okay? If you, if you march pi over 6 units in the counterclockwise direction, you end up at the point radical 3 over 2, 1 half. So the cosine would have to be radical 3 over 2, the sine is 1 half. Now the tangent is 1 half divided by radical 3 over 2, which we could write as 1 over radical 3. Or actually, you may see it written differently because you could rationalize the, the denominator, right? You could write it like this. When you take sine over cosine, 1 half over radical 3 over 2, you get this. So when you cancel the 2's, you get 1 over ra radical 3. The way you rationalize the denominator, remember, is to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. So that could, instead of writing as 1 over square root of 3, you could also write it as radical 3 over 3. Talk to your instructors. See how they want you to write it. Anyway, the reciprocal of the um, cosine would be 2 over radical 3. But when you rationalize the denominator, it could be written like this. Check me on that. The reciprocal of the uh, sine is the cosecant, which is 2. And the reciprocal of the tangent is cotangent, which is radical 3. Let's see, I'll do one more and then I'll have you finish it, okay? Alright, for pi over 4, that means you march around here. Let's see, you march around here in the counterclockwise direction, pi over 4 units, you end up at radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2. There's your cosine, there's your sine. Tangent becomes 1. Now, the reciprocal of the cosine, which would be 2 over radical 2, when, when you rationalize the denominator, you get radical 2. Same is true with the reciprocal of sine, which is cosecant. You get radical 2 there, too. And the, and the reciprocal of 1 is 1, so the cotangent is, is 1. Alright, so why don't you hit the pause button, see if you can fill out this table on your own, okay? And we'll, we'll go over in just a second. Okay, this is what I get. Uh, let's do the last one. At pi, you're over here, so the cosine would have to be negative 1, the y chord is the sine, that would have to be 0. Tangent would be 0 over negative 1, which is 0. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1, so the secant is negative 1. And for the other two, the reciprocals of these of zeros are, does not exist. Okay, let's use that now and convert and find some trig, um, trig values for different uh, for, for points in different quadrants, okay? So, like I said, if, you, if you're really good at section 5.1, then this isn't that hard. If you can locate the point, then you can find the value of the trig functions. I'm going to focus on cosine, sine, and tangent, because remember, the other three are just the reciprocals of these. t equals 2 pi over 3. This is your pi over 3, so 2 pi over 3 puts you right there in the second quadrant. So the x is negative, y is positive. 
So you get this, negative 1 half radical 3 over 2, the tangent becomes neg negative radical 3. 5 pi over 6, let's see. 5 pi over 6 puts you right there in the second quadrant, doesn't it? So it's the same point as in the first quadrant, but again, x is negative, y is positive. You get this. When you take the tangent, you get 1 half divided by negative radical 3 over 2, which is negative 1 over radical 3, but you rationalize it, it becomes this. Let's do some more. I'll, I'll give you some to practice in just a minute. How about that? 4 pi over 3. Let's see. You march around in a counterclockwise sense. 4 pi over 3 puts you right there, doesn't it? Right up here. There's 4 pi over 3. Uh, so it's the same as this point here, but they're both x and y are negative. Uh, so then the tangent becomes positive in the third quadrant, right? How about 5 pi over 4? Let's see. Or negative 5 pi over 4. Remember what that means? That means we start at 1, 0, but we go clockwise. So negative, this is negative 1 pi over 4, negative 2 pi over 4, negative 3 pi over 4, negative 4 pi over 4, negative 5 pi over 4 puts us right there. Same as this point, but in the second quadrant, x is negative, y is positive, tangent is negative 1. So see, you really don't have to memorize that much. You have to know those, those um, special points and be able to convert them into different quadrants. Okay, a couple more, and then I'll, let, I'll turn you loose. t is negative 5 pi over 6. So let, let's go clockwise here. Negative 5 pi over 6 puts you right there, doesn't it? Same as this point, but the x and y are both negative, so that makes the tangent positive. And, uh, you 1 over radical 3, which is the same as radical 3 um, over 3. 5 pi over 4, let's see, positive 5 pi over 4, that puts us down here in the third quadrant. Uh, so the tangent would be positive 1 there. Negative 9 pi over 2, well, watch out on that one. Uh, think of that as negative 8 pi over 2, which means that's uh, the same thing as negative 4 pi. You've gone around counterclockwise twice, that's negative 8 pi over 2, and you end up at um, another negative pi over 2, puts you down here at 0, negative 1. Notice the tangent's undefined there. Last one, 11 pi over 6, you know where that is. That's right here. So x is radical 3 over 2, y is negative, uh, negative 1 half, so the tangent's negative radical 3 over 3. Okay, why don't you try some? Go ahead, see if you can fill this table out. Hit the pause button, we'll go over these in just a minute. Okay, on the first one, negative pi over 3 is right there. So the coordinates would be the same as this point, but x is negative, y is x is I should say x is positive, y is negative, tangent becomes negative radical 3. 7 pi over 6, you should have gotten right here. Uh, positive 7 pi over 6 is right down there, isn't it? x is negative, it's in the third quadrant, x and y are both negative. So the tangent's positive. It would be radical 3 over 3. 5 pi over 3, you should have got, end up right there. x is 1 half, y is negative radical 3 over 2. Tangent becomes negative radical 3. 3 pi over 4, that's easy. That's it's just over here in the second quadrant, isn't it? Same as this point right here, but x is negative, y is positive, tangent's negative 1. Okay, let's do one, one more round here. Hit the pause button, see if you can... Um, Find the trig values for these points, for these values of t. Okay, let's see. I, I'm a, I, I, these are actually values of t. These are numbers, right? You're moving around the unit circle, a distance, a real number t. Uh, you end up at a point, and the, uh, the cosine is the x-coordinate. So where is 15 pi over 6? This is kind of tricky. You might think it's, it has a reference, um, reference number or a reference point of this, but it actually doesn't. Uh, because if you, if you divide 15 by, or let's say 3 goes into both of them, 15 pi over 6 is the same as what, 5 pi over 3? I should say 5 pi over 2. When you divide both top and bottom by um, 3, you get 5 pi over 2. So where is 5 pi over 2? You, get, you go 4 pi over 2, and then another pi over 2 puts you right there. So be careful on this. Always, always uh, try to reduce it first. You end up at 0, 1. Negative 13 pi over Two. Again, what I would probably do is look at it as negative 12 pi over 2, which is negative 6 pi. That means I go three times around clockwise, right? And then I end up at, right here, at another uh, negative pi over 2. So you end up at 0, negative 1. Let's see. Um, for the last two, I get uh, negative 5 pi over 3. That puts you in the first quadrant, right? And negative 3 pi over 4 puts you in the third quadrant. Alrighty then. Alright, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.